So today, big thing I want to discuss is this new details thing over here in the AI inspector. And I'm going to specifically uh, show you guys um, how to train one of them that I think is very important, which is recoveries remaining. And then as I was preparing for this, I was also trying to uh, train the shield health. Um, and I noticed something very weird. Uh, first thing you'll notice is that there used to be some stuff at the top over here with the opponent's weight and element. Uh, instead, we just moved it into here. So now you can just adjust kind of like their weight and element from uh, inside this menu over here. Just makes it a lot kind of cleaner. Another thing you'll notice is now there's a time, uh, there's a time toggle over here. Right now it doesn't do anything because I haven't trained my AI to look at time, uh, but we can certainly explore that. One of the ones I for sure want to get to is this recoveries remaining, right? And this allows you to basically train your AI to use different recovery options depending on what it has remaining. The two other things that we added was shield health, right? So for example, um, knowing how much health you have left in your shield can be very informative because when your shield health runs out, you enter into a long period of stun. Uh, so it's important to know when it's going down so that you can basically avoid this. And then the last one is this move completed thing over here. And basically what that is, it's how much of the current animation is already completed. You'll notice that it's grayed out and has a value of negative one. That's just for moves that don't have a natural start and end. For example, the opponent is an idle. Idle doesn't have a starting and ending point. It continuously loops, right? So there, it doesn't really make sense to have a move completed. But if you enter something like a punch, for example, now there is a starting point to the punch and an ending point to the punch, right? Uh, and by training uh, your AI to react to how much of the move is completed, you can theoretically train it to when your the opponent's starting a move to potentially do a perfect shield or when the opponent's ending the move to punish them when they're in end leg. With that said, these are some of the new things that we included and we're really excited about like some of the cool strategies people are, are actually going to teach their AI. I think the first one um, I want to show you guys is this jumps remaining thing over here. I'm just going to hop directly into training. Um, we can just train against the dummy. When I'm training recovery, I like using data limit and I like using this arena um, this arena stage just because it's like symmetrical. But of course you should train on all of them. But I'm just going to focus on this arena one for now. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to train recovery as I normally would, but I'm going to switch it up, for example. Like I'm not always going to do jump, uppercut, and flip kick. I'm going to switch up the order, like flip kick, jump, and then uppercut. The reason for that is because I want my AI to see uh, different combinations of moves remaining, right? Because if I always just did this, it kind of always sees that I have the same um, sequence of moves remaining, and I want to switch it up so that it learns a lot of different permutations, okay? So jump, I'll start off with jump. Now I'll start off maybe with flip kick. Now maybe with uppercut. So I just showed it kind of like a few different permutations. I'll do it on the other side as well. And then lastly, there's a few different permutations. Actually, I think that one I did it like twice. Um, there you go. Just training a bunch of different combinations over here. Now, I'm just going to end training over here. If you remember, before we relied very heavily on your action in order to inform it on what to do next. And the reason for that, it was kind of rooted in logic in that if you do a jump, right, you don't want to follow it up with another jump, right? So that kind of makes sense. But for example, if you do jump and then you do uppercut and then you try and do jump again, that's where the problem arises, right? Because um, that could have been one of the valid combos you showed, but maybe you could have shown it flip kick into uppercut and then jump, right? But the key thing is that it just looks at the previous action. So it's always going to look at uppercut. So if, for example, you did jump, then uppercut, 
and it tries to do jump again, it's just going to die. Right. And, and that's, I mean, it certainly happened to me a lot. Uh, and so while using your previous action as a condition uh, was great as a first step, it was kind of a hack. And I think the true fix here is including recoveries remaining. So we're just going to train on that. Uh, actually, we should probably train on like, um, <laughs> like ray casting, just so it knows like where it is relative to the stage. I'm going to dial lambdas all the way up. And I'm just going to see kind of what it ends up learning. Interesting. Uh, it's going straight up. Did I not go to the right at all? Maybe it's just because I only went to the right in certain states. I'll inspect that further. But the key thing I want to, I want to see is this recovery's remaining stuff. Okay, so... If I use a jump, yes, that, that works perfectly. So when I use the jump, it should have a lower probability of doing jump. When I use the uppercut, it should have a lower probability of using the attack because the attack is what does the uppercut. If I use a flip kick, yeah, it should decrease the probability of flip kick. So it looks like, it looks like it's on the right track. Yeah, if I use uppercut and flip kick and I still have a jump remaining then it increased the probability of jump but let's see yeah if I still have an uppercut remaining and I use jump and flip kick the highest probability is to the uppercut so that looks like it's doing well um obviously we need to do it over multiple iterations for it to really get uh sort of solidified uh but it's looking pretty pretty good over here um, I am still trying to figure out why it's going up a lot. That's interesting. It's like when it, maybe I did this. When it was down here, it mostly went up. And then when it started approaching, like clearing the stage, then it started going like to the right. That's interesting. Maybe I do that subconsciously and I don't even know. Huh. Yeah, it's, it's like it's going up. And then when it approaches here, it starts going to the left. Just want to like double check. If I do a, an uppercut over here. So I did an uppercut. It's going up. And then when it gets up here, then it's starting to go to the left. Same thing with special. Yeah, it's going to the left. You know what? Maybe maybe this is deceiving and it actually works. I don't know. I'm trying to rationalize it to myself like, huh, why is it mostly going up? I guess I did mostly go up. I'll have to rewatch this to make sure that I actually did, but I'm kind of curious just to save this. Um, oh, that's not good, actually just holding up over here okay no something's something's not right it's holding up too much is it this thing let me just get rid of it oh it is that thing okay i uh i know what the problem is guys i know what the problem is okay so this is a very tricky thing about dynamically updating neural networks um Basically, remember in the last video, I talked about this concept of a memory, right? Essentially, um, like over time, you start building up this strong memory. Um, and I've built up a solid memory for this guy. But when I introduce new features, it has zero memory about that thing. I won't use a technical term. What that means is that essentially that new space has more capacity to learn. Right, So it doesn't get anchored as much. So even though I say I want to use a high lambda, from its point of view, it's like, well, it doesn't really matter what you want. There's no memory here to anchor your lambda to. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's why it's a lot more, it's a lot more free. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to dial learning rate way down and I'm going to dial epochs down and I'm going to 
I'm gonna experiment here. This is like some live experimentation. I'm just gonna establish some memory for recoveries remaining right now. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna ramp up Lambda. Holy smokes, did it work? Guys, it might have freaking worked. Look, the direction is mostly consistent with before. This is good. Diagonal, yeah. Yep, diagonal. I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty excited about this. I actually just learned something. <laughs> the smallest update, um, just to establish some memory, has a big impact in terms of its ability to remember. So um, just keep that in mind. Any of these new things, they don't have an established memory yet. So Lambda doesn't affect those. But if you do even the smallest training session, it establishes some memory of what these things are. And now you're able to actually use that to not override things too much in the next session. So I'm kind of kind of liking this. I'm going to definitely save it. Now, of course, the changes were minor. You'd have to build this up over a series of updates. But I kind of just want to hop into simulation and see see how we get on over here. Yeah, I'm probably going to get smoked. I haven't trained this guy in in a couple weeks. But let's let's just see. All right, we're cooking. Oh, I should have grabbed. We can train that after. Recovery is on, on point. Recovery is on point. That's the important part. Wait. Oh, no. <laughs> it's so close. Look at that, guys. We are, we're cooking over here. We got beat, but that's not important. The important thing is that we are getting better and better at recoveries. Recoveries remaining comes clutch. What I want to show you is something really weird that I observed when I was trying specifically to train Perfect Shield. What can go wrong? <laughs> um, so let me just show you guys what can go wrong. Okay, what happens if I move the projectile to away from me? That's weird. It's a lot higher when it's moving away from me. And it's even higher when it's my projectile, right? Versus the opponent. What's going on here? Let me show you guys um, exactly what's happening over here. Your fighter over here, your opponent's fighter. This is the water special, right? The water special is traveling towards you. And you are not doing shield when it's traveling towards you. The moment you do shield is basically like in order to do a perfect shield. It's when it's right here. Okay. And we're going to denote the opponent with this red tag over here. Okay? This is the opponent's projectile. It's traveling towards you. As soon as you do a perfect shield, what happens is now this thing starts to move away from you. And let's say you let go of the shield over here, right? You have some delayed reaction. You let go of the shield over here. So now you own this one, this one, this one, and this one. And the distance that it travels is from here to here. Now, from a data perspective, which one is bigger, right? The one or two frames that you captured it at the exact moment you shielded or there may be like four frames over here four to like 10 frames maybe i'm like missing frames in between where it is your projectile and it's traveling in the opposite direction let's say you had like one entry that was your opponent's uh projectile traveling towards you and then you have like all these other ones which is your projectile traveling towards the opponent what it's going to learn is like, okay, this is the dominant one. This is the more important one over here. This is the more important one. And so I'm just going to learn to do shield in this situation because I think it's more important than this other situation over here. So that's what's happening. And as soon as I saw this, I was like, oh, that's, that's actually quite interesting. It's frustrating, but it's quite interesting. The tricky thing there though, is that when you do that, Essentially, you're losing security of just in case you don't perfect shield it, right? Because if you just tap it and then you happen to miss the perfect shield, the projectile is just going to hit you and destroy you, right? So it's like, do you trade off the the timing for security? Um, it's it's something that I'm, I'm still thinking through. And honestly, I don't have a great answer for it yet. Just do these bad boys over here. I'll do the exact same thing. I don't remember what Epochs was, but I think it was something like this. 
and I just train it. Now, of course, shield is gonna increase regardless because that was the only thing I did. What we're focused on is we wanna see that the direction thing is correct. And now we see it is correct, right? When it's traveling towards you, it has the highest increase in probability. And when it's, especially when it's the opponents, it has the highest increase in probability, right? So this is exactly what we want, right? Which is very different than before, because now we have this added protection. We had these three selected, right? Um, we have the projectile element selected, so we know what type of element it is. Additionally, we have this concept of projectile on target, and this embedded in it has um, information about who it's coming from, whether it's the opponent or ours. The problem is that once we do the perfect shield, the opponent's projectile turns into our projectile. All of these frames afterwards, when it's moving towards the opponent, it's actually your projectile now. Just wanted to show it a few things. So here what I cared about is, yeah, I did a few combos to my action. Opponent's action is very important. I guess I followed up with some combos, so that's kind of important. You know what? Uh, we're trying stuff. We can always come back to the shielding if we need to. Yeah. Combat's looking better. You just want a more attack-focused thing, and there's still a decent probability of shielding against a projectile, so let's see if it's still... Honestly, if we just get that, I'll count that as a win. Oh, that was awful, awful recovery. <laughs> Honestly, it's doing pretty good um, in terms of like grabbing Guppy when Guppy's in shield. I'm pretty happy with that. Not happy with that. Okay. I do want to watch it again just because we made some silly mistakes. Just want to make sure that we didn't completely, absolutely wreck our policy. Nice. It's a bit lucky, but I'll take it. Honestly... I can't complain about recovery. Recovery is looking really solid. Combat, not so much, but we'll get there. Yeah, increases the probability that I'm going to grab. Not by a substantial amount, though. What's strange <laughs> is that when Guppy shields, it increases the probability that I shield. <laughs> That's so weird. And I'm just going to be collecting data. Um, this does mean it's going to take a little longer to train, but maybe I won't go the whole three minutes. I just want to capture like some of my just natural strategy. And my natural strategy is getting the shit kicked out of me. <laughs> throw in shield health, recoveries remaining. Let's throw in all this stuff. Let's, <laughs> let's see what happens. Oh, you know what? I don't know. If, I don't know if I trained on these, so I don't know if it's going to mess up the memory but I, th I think it should be fine because so i think it should have saved some memory associated with them i'm gonna th get rid of animation frame get rid of shield health wonder if that's messing it up i'm kind of nervous to update it <laughs> it's like because <laughs> this this scares me over here what, that it's going to the right actually this makes sense you know what Oh, this is going to hurt if it really sucks. But we're experimenting. I'm going to do a quick save. Okay, let's go one more against Guppy. Hope it ends off on a better note. Oh, I, I get destroyed on the treasure map. Oh, nice, nice. Look, it grabbed the shield. Oh, <laughs> yo. <laughs> Guys. Actually, I don't want to jinx it. I don't want to jinx it. Yo, look at that. Look at that. Doing more perfect shields. I was trying when I was playing to do more shields. Oh, let's go. Nice. Ah, oh, let's go. Let's go. What a freaking recovery. You know what? I don't even care if I lose. That was amazing. Our guy needs a lot of work still, but... Two things he definitely learned, for sure, is to grab Guppy when he's in shield. And that recoveries are getting godly. They're still not perfect. He doesn't know what to do under the platform. But it's all good. We're going we're gonna to teach him that. I'm curious to see how he performs on the arena against the Guppy, because that's mostly what we're training for. Okay.
Good, good. Okay, no, we, we, we have certainly confirmed this guy knows how to grab. We got absolutely decimated there, but it's all good. We taught him two very important things. Grab when the opponent is in shield and recover like your life depends on it. Probably ended off over here. We'll continue improving our little guy next week.